Hello and welcome back to another episode of RGM. Today's another unboxing video and as the title would suggest it's a very old hard drive and a large one at that. In fact this will be my largest and oldest hard drive in my collection and I'm very excited actually to be getting this one open. So let's get started. Okay, let's start. My goodness, it really is big. Oh. Wow. Look at the size of that thing. Wow, this thing is absolutely massive. Um, the pictures didn't do it justice. Well, as you can see, it's, it's very big. Um, it's actually bigger than I imagined it to be. And just to give you an idea of just how big it is, That's a standard three and a half inch hard drive. Wow. That is just remarkable, isn't it? Um, how far we have come in the space of nearly 40 years. Wow. Well, obviously, I mean, this size has been around now for about 20 odd years. Um, I'm sure someone will correct me on that. But yes, I just can't believe the size of this thing. I'm, I'm still, I'm still smiling about it. Um, <laughs> It's actually making me laugh and it's really heavy as well it must weigh about 10 kilos actually i'll have to weigh it actually just to check how uh, how much it does weigh right i'll go around it now with the camera close up so you can uh, get a closer look at it so here's a close-up of the uh, main system board it's in immaculate condition everything's laid out so neat and tidy some bridge wires there. Very large motor to drive the platters. The belt underneath it takes it to the spindle of the platters. Banks of voltage regulators. There you have your card adapters there to go to the hard drive controller card. A serial number and model number. The voltage required to drive this is 115 volts. There's a Molex plug there for the motors. And then just underneath there, there's one there for the uh, motherboard, system board. Well, I think that's what it is anyway. If anybody has any information on this uh, hard drive, any documents at all regarding connections, etc., let me know in the comments. Let's take a look at the underbelly of the beast. Yes, that's the um, locking clamp there, which wasn't put on unfortunately to stop the platters from moving. That's the casing for the drive belt from the AC motor down to the platters. Uh, got a couple of warning labels there. Let's take a look at the front. Oh, there's a label in there, let's have a look and see what that says. There we go, a little, little bit of information there about it. Date first entered, 27th of the 9th, 1983. Latest update, 26th of the 9th, 1983. Then you've got your um, head, head uh, and track information there. It's always nice when you get these little bits of information that come with these old drives. Another piece of history. Just looking around the drive, I've just pulled this out, tucked away inside. 
the error log. Got the date on it as well. 1983. There are the two Molex connectors on the motherboard um, in the manual which I found online since it says one's 24 volts DC and I think the other one was minus 5 volt DC. I'll double check that again in a bit when we look at the manual. And that's your AC connector there for the motor. So that's going to require two power supplies to get this thing fired up. And just there is an air filter canister. The AC cable will come around the back there through the side into this giant capacitor. It looks like one of those ones, that, those metal canister uh, capacitors that you would find in a microwave oven. And then it goes into the large AC motor there. And just on the side there is the stepper motor which controls the heads. And then the fine cables are coming out the side from the heads into these connectors just here. I bet this makes a right racket when it's uh, powered up. Okay, so here we have a manual for the hard drive. I found this on manuallibs.com. Um, you can view it online or you can download it as a PDF. I just want to quickly jump down and find out exactly how big this, in it, this thing is capacity wise. Let's see if we can find it quickly. Oh, here we go. So, um, five megabytes or 10, wow. Um, there was a 1003 and a 1004. I got the four, so mine must be the 10.67 megabytes. Blimey, I really thought it would have been a bit more than that. I thought at least 20 megabytes for that time period. That surprises me. 4.34 megabits a second. Blimey, that is slow. Simple floppy like interface. Yes, it has the card edge slots, but like I mentioned before, unfortunately, it's a 50 pin connector and not the uh, standard 34. Here we have the voltages, so 110 to 115 and 200 to 30, depending on what country you're in obviously. Strange how I've got the 110 uh, version, 115 version, I'm in England, it must have been imported. DC voltage requirements, plus 24 volts DC, plus 5, minus 5 DC. I should imagine the plus 24 volts DC will be for the stepper motor, and then those two there will be for the logic board. And there's the weight, 7.7 .7 kilos. I said around 10, so I wasn't too far off. I won't need to weigh it now anyway. And here we are, typical usage, 8,000 hours. So I guess that must be what they expect of it of life, or component life, five years. I suppose it's whichever one comes sooner. Um, I, thought, I mean, can they age just by age? I don't know. I should imagine they would have had um, I've made a note somewhere, whoever looked after the mainframe would have made a note to say how long it had been running so they would know when to swap them out before they failed. Let's see what else we've got here. So capacity unformatted per drive per service surface per track. Um, it's got four heads so I should imagine there's four platters. There's a cross section, the uh, platter side. There's that air filter I mentioned before. So it sucks air in then. Pressure compensation absolute filter. There's the stepper motor. And there are your heads. The way that worked was when it received a pulse, it would go back and forth, moving the arm in and out, moving the heads across the platters. Um, I've actually had an old five and a half inch floppy drive have one of these motors in and the stainless steel strap there snapped on it. So I don't know if it had been put under some kind of stress or they just break eventually. Hopefully this one's okay if I ever get it powered up. A quick scan through, there's the edge connector pin layout for the larger one. So 20 feet maximum on the cable. That's quite long actually. And there's the other edge connector. More voltages there. 
Interesting how it's got 60 hertz and 50 hertz for both voltages. Because um, I thought about getting a step down transformer which goes from 230 to 110. Um, but obviously in the UK here it's 50 hertz. So that would, uh, I would imagine, make the platters run a little bit slower. So if it ever was connected up, would that affect the data transfer rate? That'll be interesting to know if anybody knows that. There's your um, connections there. AC motor, DC, 50 pin edge connector, and then the smaller one. That's 20 pin on the smaller one. And there are those Molos connectors, the AC one there, and then the DC one. I'm not spotting anything there to say which voltage goes into which pin. That would be interesting to know, I've not seen that yet. Little drawing there of the uh, logic board. So some jumpers on there that you can enable and disable. Various different features of the board. Fault detection circuitry. And the packaging guide. Okay, so exactly what type of computer did this come out of? Well, doing a Google search and coming across Wikipedia, they mentioned the PDP-11 series of 16-bit mini computers sold by the Digital Equipment Corporation from 1970 into the 1990s. One of a set of products in the program data processor PDP series. In total, around 600,000 PDP-11s of all models were sold, making it one of DEC's most successful product lines. This series is considered by some experts to be the most popular mini computer. Well, by today's standards, you would hardly call it a mini computer for what it could do, but for back then, obviously, it was state of the art. Well, I must say, I really liked the uh, colour scheme of some of those early computers. Um, they certainly had something about them, didn't they? Very retro looking. Well, I think I've come to realise now that there's no point in powering this up because I don't have any way of connecting it to a computer. Since I've noticed that it has a 50 pin edge connector instead of the usual 34 pin that you get on the MFM drives, um, it just doesn't seem any need really. But I'm still very proud to have this in my collection. Um, and while I'm here talking about hard drives, I thought I might as well uh, pull the rest of my collection out, or some of them. Uh, this is an example of some of the more interesting drives, my older ones. So let's take a quick look at these. So starting on the left there, we have the Shugart drive just over 10 megabytes, 8 inch platters. Then we have a IBM MFM drive, 5.5 inch, 70 megabytes. Seagate ST225, 21 megabytes. Those are both MFM. 50 pin SCSI, 700 megabyte from IBM. Very old Western Digital, 3.5 inch there, 21 megabytes. Over to the laptop hard drives now. Um, that was my biggest one on the left there physically. It's an IBM 344 megabyte drive. Then as time went on, they started to get slimmer. Then we went on to serial ATA. And then EIDE. They was, those were commonly used in iPods and small computers. Then we have a compact flash size, four gigabyte mechanical drive. Uh, that's the inside of a drive there, four platters. I think that was around about 80 megabytes. Okay, well I think that just about wraps up today's show. Uh, it's been very interesting. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Um, I've certainly learned a lot from this episode. Um, I had no idea there was another connector um, before MFM. Well, obviously before even that, there was even more connectors. Uh, but I don't think I'll ever own any of that kind of equipment. If you think I've missed out any drives incidentally, uh, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've covered them all from the last uh, 40 years. Um, obviously I've not touched on SSD or compact flash or any other type of memory card. I'll save that for another episode. Well thank you for joining me. Um, please take care and until next time, be seeing you. <laughs>